Hey guys, Savage Joy here with Real Progressives. Sorry we're a few minutes late. If you know me at all, it's because of IT. Um, I suck at that shit. But tonight we are joined by Tambourine Borelli. Um, she is actually a candidate in Washington State for District 10 uh, for U.S. Representatives. So thank you so much for joining us tonight, Tambourine. Thank you, Joy, for having me. Absolutely. Um, Awesome. Oh, wow. Guillaume loves you even more now. <laughs> that was for you, Guillaume. <laughs> See, now I got to have you back just for that alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I cannot thank you enough. I knew I was going to love you. The second we started talking through Messenger, I was like, I've known this woman for 10 years. Like, you're just an amazing, amazing person. Thank you um, so much, Joy. I feel the same. Absolutely. So we are definitely going to have you back on before, you know, primaries. Absolutely, for sure. I'm not asking. I'm telling. So <laughs> we'll keep in touch. Um, but thank you so much. And thank you guys for watching you right now. But I represent uh, people like me, the silent majority. There is millions of people that feel just like I do. I'm breaking up with the left and Trump. You are, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you are what I thought, the leader that I thought Bernie Sanders was. All right, this is our last speaker, the one, one of the ones we've all been waiting for. Her name is Tamarine Borelli. Uh, she is an election integrity investigator who began as a board member with Election Justice USA in 2016, delivering Bernie Sanders a comprehensive statistical analysis of his stolen primary by the DNC. She currently is the director of Washington Election Integrity Coalition United, or the WEICU, and is committed to rooting out all forms of election integrity issues so that the voters of Washington can have transparent, secure, and publicly verified elections. Welcome, Tamarine Borelli. Before I begin, I'd like to ask everybody to either join hands or touch somebody. Howdy folks, Darren Ray Fonso here talking about workers' compensation and labor and industries in the state of Washington and whole Washington and the whole Washington initiative and my Democratic PCO, Jason Call for Congress, who I tried to get help from to get the injured workers' federal issue on our Democrats' table only to be told by Jason Call that his priorities were whole Washington and Medicare for all, not the injured workers' issue of America. And I'd like to... Uh, 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 share with you uh, something that Jason wrote to me at one point um, and uh, way back at the a few years back here when I was trying to get him to get the, the, the my issue on the table as my local Democrat PCO captain uh, and he told me he could get my issue and then he came back and said well we can't get your issue on the table but I could get you a state ombudsman and I could do all this other stuff that the entrenched Democrats had already promised us and aren't getting us to start with so he gave us nothing new and he could not help me with my issue and refused to help with my issue and only uh, wrote me back at one point because I, I was calling them out for the whole Washington for basically having Republican Scott Stefani and Tyler Vega, who runs our Bernie Kratz here in Washington State, also a U.S. candidate, Bernie Kratz candidate, was telling me to vote for Scott Stefani, the Republican work comp lawyer. So I want to know why Republicans are behind the whole Washington initiative. And I want to know why Jason Call, uh, uh, about two years ago, sent me uh, uh, on Facebook, told me, uh, hey, Darren, I'm working with the uh, I-1600 group. I have heard there are some unpleasant uh, 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 accusatory messages coming from you. What's going on? There is absolutely nothing Republican associated with this initiative. Nothing could be further from the truth, is what Jason Call told me. And another time, now, just recently, Jason Call also told me that I'm unhinged and that um, his priorities have always been Medicare for all 
in single pair hole Washington, not the injured workers issue. So I would like to uh, share with folks a video I have where Tamburini Borelli, who I also sought help from as a, Bern as a Bernie Krat to get our injured workers issue on the table, and she refused to help as she sold us whole Washington and Medicare for all. Now she comes out and says she's a Trumpster. So why is whole Washington and Tyler Vega and Jason Call, my local Democrat PCO, telling me to vote for Democrat, um, vote for Republicans like Scott Stefani and Tamburini Borelli, who is the whole wash push behind pushing this whole Washington initiative and single payer in the state of Washington. This is a business community trying to manipulate the Democrat sheep to do a bizman's agenda. When in Colorado, uh, David DePaulo, a work comp attorney, interviewed uh, the business community and a, a business, uh, uh, a small businessman that runs a small business association in the state of Colorado uh, came right out and told us that the general public is naive about uh, uh, workers' comp, and so they won't know how single pair will, will, will harm the injured workers in our grand bargain. So the general public is so naive that we can take advantage of them by misleading them and lying to them. So let's listen to the candidates and Jason uh, or, or, or um, Tyler Vega on a phone call tells me to seek alternative advice from the Republican uh, and alternative solutions from the Republican Scott Stefani. And then I also have on tape uh, Tamburini Borelli who comes right out and tells us she Trump is the messiah. So I'm sorry, Jason Call, when you tell me and you lie to me that there's no Republicans involved with whole Washington, that has turned out to be a lie. Next, we're going to hear from a national Bernie delegate, a board member of Election Justice USA, and coincidentally, the woman who is going to challenge Denny Eck next election cycle. Hey everybody. Is everyone feeling all right? Every single time that I have the privilege to stand at these steps, the magnitude of what happens when I don't care if there's five people standing on these steps, the magnitude of what's created when two or more gather <laughs> in the name of something that's right for the people, it's humbling and I thank every one of you, really thank you for taking your time out on this beautiful day to come here and give your time and your energy to something that is such an immutable principle for all of us. We sit here for those who aren't here, that may not even realize that they should be. <laughs> so give yourselves a heartfelt applause. I want to thank whole Washington for taking up this banner of single payer for our state. Because, you know, HR 676 in and of itself is important, but what it says, when we have an organization to stand up and say, even if that doesn't go through, we're gonna make sure we as Washingtonians have it. I'm one of the people that would be called the silent majority that is not being silent anymore because it's just beyond the point of ridiculousness, mind blowing weirdness. People that, I mean, I know that our friends are intelligent people. Um, it's just bizarre. This, this obsession with hating Trump, this is coming from someone who used to be considered far left. I, in 2016, was a national Bernie delegate. I ran for state Senate in 2016 in Washington as a Democrat. I ran for Congress in 2018 as a progressive independent um, on the board of Election Justice USA. 
for election integrity. And I have to tell you, um, look, uh, those of you who leaned to the left, but you know, aren't so far gone that you can't use critical thinking, I'm talking to you right now. But I represent people like me, the silent majority. There is millions of people that feel just like I do. I'm breaking up with the left and Trump, you are, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you are what I thought, the leader that I thought Bernie Sanders was. Let me tell you something. Wow, so uh, there you have it, folks. This is one of the Washington State Democrats and whole Washington and uh, most of our advocates that I have begged for help for from for the last five years. I spoke with her uh, campaign aide for 45 minutes, on the, 45 minutes on the telephone regarding the needed federal oversight for America's injured workers. She did not want to help me put that issue on the table. Actually, she wanted to push our issue off the table just to push her agenda, which seems to uh, starting to have a, uh, be a conservative agenda, not the agenda that Senator Sanders set forth for um, under the populist movement. So one has to ask if, if, if Ken Bernie DeRay is basically the closet place Republican in the Democrat um, uh, our revolution movement, um, uh, are there any others like her, such as uh, Tyler Vega, who I also beg for help for injured workers from, and who I'm going to share a phone call with that I had with Tyler Vega, where he too tells me to vote for their Republican work compiler, Scott Stefani. Um, and then I'm also going to share with you how David Strider, the United States congressional candidate, who also claimed to be a Democrat, um, uh, calls me a bully for calling him uh, a bully for being remaining silent about the war on injured workers and the needed federacy as he pushes me up for all of us and a whole Washington issue that when you look under the hood, leaves our injured workers behind. Uh, we need to fight for maybe possibly for both issues, but to tell the injured workers to go away with their issue as these people have thrown the, the Senator Sanders populist flag behind their, their heads for five years to try and get uh, uh, entrenched Democrats out or get their, it, it appears now, to be the Republican candidates in, Republican candidates who are only pretending to be Democrats to try and ride this populist movement to get their biz-minded folks into office who don't seem to align politically or morally or philosophically, philosophically with the, uh, the um, democratic social agenda that Senator Sanders has put forth. Some of us injured workers and patients here in America are crying foul. A few of injured workers and the victims of work, both in state work comp systems where federal government has told us is telling us, we've cried out to these burning crowds for help for five years now as they have all told us, no, they can't put our issue on the table, as Jason Paul for Congress told me. He, his priorities were made for all and single payer and whole Washington. Not the injured workers issue, but I was crazy and needed to go away with my injured workers for issue. And he too says to vote for Scott Stefani, the uh, work comp Republican lawyer. Um, there's something wrong with this. There's nothing moral uh, of, of, of Gigi Ferguson and, and the others who seem to sign off on this about lying to the injured workers of America um, and then turn around and tell us to vote for your Republicans. There's something wrong with that. that there's nothing moral about it, Monday or any other day of the week. The Washington Democrat Party needs to wake up and where are the entrenched Democrats? As this as our Dem Party is being infiltrated and stacked with basically conservative Republican businessmen and women who have no intent of putting forth uh, the Sanders um, or the minimum federal oversight that uh, the United States Congress uh, research service, some smart folks from both sides told us we need today. Um, which is the United States Congressional Research Service here in 2020. Smart folks from both sides told us that the workers of America need this third issue on the table with any other issues we got going on. So for folks to tell us to just put their issue on the table or tell any workers to go away with their issue, there's something wrong with that. And the motives behind uh, saying we're going to help people and we're going to help sick people, but yet when you say we can't help injured workers, the weakest links in the chain, and that's all, all for one and one for all. And that's what we're supposed to stand for. Um, 
this is a gorgeous to me as someone who believed in 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 in, in my liberal ideology basically um, to have a, my own Democrat party infiltrated by a bunch of Republican businessmen. But when I came to them in 2015 with the same letter from Senator Sanders signed by uh, Senator Patty Murray um, and about 10 others uh, telling us that we need this new federal oversight to stop a class war on America's injured workers, that none of these people would help us put that issue on the table. And not only not did they put it on the table, they were told, to go, told us to go away with that issue to push on their agenda that we keep losing on. It's almost as though they infiltrated our party to have our seat run around in circles for agendas and issues we never do get while telling injured workers to go away with your issue. There's something wrong with that. We need to take a, a, a gut check here and call out the people on the wrong level left that seem to be really nothing but entrenched Republicans only using the populist movement and the poor people's movement to try and put their own um, those minded out, those minded folks into office. Disguised as big bees. I thought that. Now let's hear from Tyler later. And he told me to vote for the Republican Scott Stefan. Hi folks, my name is Darren Ray Fonso and I'm here to talk to you about workers' comp or labor and industri industries as we call it here in the state of Washington and about the minimum federal oversight that Senator Bernie Sanders told us injured workers of America we need. Uh, yet we have uh, my own Our Revolution Bernie Kratz and Tyler Vega failing intently to put that minimum federal oversight on the table. My own Bernie Kratz and Our Revolution folks seem to be ran by businessmen like Tyler Vega who uh, wanted me to seek alternative advice from what Senator Sanders told us injured workers we need from uh, uh, their endorsed Republican, log cabin Republican, Scott Stefani, uh, who um, doesn't seem to, to, to know anything about the minimum federal standards that Senator Sanders says we all need to be have, have on the table. So I'm going to let you listen to my phone call with Tyler Vega, where he specifically tells me to seek all alternative solutions from their endorsed Republican Scott Stefani. Yes, Darren. It's Darren Fonso. Right. Well, I just you, you called me, so I I wanted to get it live, but I can do it better with this phone. Can I talk now? Was that a yes? <laughs> okay. Well, what I want what I want to say, Tyler, is before I go talk to Steve, Steve, who I I I I I applaud his efforts. He's an awesome lawyer, and he and he helps the the homeless, and he's helping with foreclosure lawyers. He hasn't practiced uh, uh, work comp law in 20 years, and when he did, it was on the federal level, not on the state level, and that's the problem as the state level. And now another issue I'm having, sir, is that I don't need to talk to him as a lawyer because we have the State Bar Association. Do you know them? The, Washington, uh, the American Bar Association? 
they have written a letter, and in that letter it talks about the, the, the overtaking of the federal, the federal overtake of a, a broken state work comp. No, I mean, it, in there it talks about single payer, sir. It talks about how single payer in Colorado was, was defeated basically because uh, the workers were not going to have time loss and they were not going to have uh, vocational services. So in other words, we were being cost shifted. And we see the same thing going on here with this single player plan. And so when you tell me you have a solution, but your solution is single payer, then yeah, it's going to be hard for us to be on the same page with you if your solution for labor and injured workers of America is a single payer plan in one state. Now, the American Bar Association wants Medicare for all across the nation, and we're willing to all fight for that. But what they say, they're lawyers, you know, the American Bar Association, and what they say is the single payer in one state harms labor more than it helps us, and it allows the employers to cost shift their burdens under the grand bargains off to we, the, the workers. So, yeah, it would be hard for me to get on the same page with this other gentleman, but I'm willing to work with you guys, yes. I'm, I'm more than willing to do that, but we have to first put on the plate the American uh, Bar Association's report, workers' comp report. Have you read that, sir? No, I've read it. Well, I would, I would, I would like to do, sir, is have you read that report and then come back and ask us how you would like to help us. Gee, we're starting to see a pattern here. Hmm. They tell us they can't put our injured every state issue on the table uh, to go away with your issue. Uh, we have all these other issues, uh, but gee, please vote for uh, Republican. Yes, we do see a pattern here. Um, wow. So there you have it. Jason Call for Congress, Jaila Vega, and especially Jason Call for Congress because he's my local Democratic PCO here in Everett, Washington. He did not help the injured workers of America. He pushed our issue off the table so he could push whole Washington and single payer and Medicare for all and mainly whole Washington. This is egregious when my Democratic PCO tells me there's no Republicans involved, yet he and Tyler Vega tell me to vote for the Republican work comp lawyer Scott Staffney and uh, their biggest, one of their biggest single payer advocates, Tamarini Varelli, who was going around and pushing this initiative, turns out to be a, a, a Trump's her messiah. So I'm sorry, Jason Call, what you have done is lied as a, a, a precinct, a Democratic precinct captain, to me, a lifelong Democrat, and to all the other Democrats in our community, as you're betting down with Republican bizman to push in an initiative while you tell injured workers to go away with their federal issue. This is egregious. When we have... Our, our revolution and candidates like Jason Call, who are also a teacher at my Everett Public High School, has no business straight-faced lying to members of the public. And when one of the victims in our state comes forth and says, hey, wait a minute, there's Republicans involved here, and Jason Call instead calls me unhinged and that I'm crazy when I'm trying to get a truth told that he has lied about. Clearly, there are Republicans involved with the single-payer state initiative of whole Washington. This is egregious when our Democratic Party and even the entrenched Democrats won't call out Jason Call and these Bernie Krats for manipulating the sheep. Have a good day. Hi everybody, it's Larry with JusticeNewsNetwork.com. I'm here in Arlington, Washington, and I'm here with Scott Staffney. Scott is an attorney and an advocate, and Scott's working on uh, with a group of candidates. Okay, so uh, Revive Washington, which is ReviveWA.com, as I recall, is that correct? I believe so. Okay, um, got a little history and insight into that. I do. So what happened after a number of candidates for federal office... And we're talking U.S. Senate and Congress, they, right? Yes. Okay. After they became disenfranchised or started to question the integrity of Washington's electoral system, 
which is based primarily on vote by mail, um, and asked for recounts, of, manual recounts of a small number of precincts, Pierce County wrote the uh, candidates who wanted a recount there and said, listen, uh, do you know we're going to charge you over $13,000 to do this? And we're talking about recounting 500, 600 votes. Wow. And so... Seems kind of exorbitant to me. Well, yeah, it seems like it's designed to prevent recounts. And recounts are a part of our elections process. They're a part of voting rights law. And to have Pierce County, Washington, come out and threaten candidates that they couldn't get a recount without being severely economically punished kind of inspired all of us to say, what's going on in Washington State? And what we discovered is that Washington State has 39 different voting systems. One For in, counties? Yeah. Each one county? In each, each county takes over it. So we no longer have a free and uniform system. We have a system of 39 counties where they all do things differently. Kind of like fiefdoms, huh? Yeah, well, and that's why Pierce <laughs> County said, well, we're going to charge you 13000 because they have a different system, they say, that costs more for recounts. So we said, well, wait a minute. We're federal candidates running in a single state where the Constitution says elections shall be free and uniform. And boy, this isn't uniform. And so that day, Revive Washington was formed. Ah, thank you for the history. Sure, please. Doug Bassler, Tambourine Borelli, Joseph Bruntles, G.G. Ferguson, um, Art Coday, uh, myself, and... Uh, Dave Strider. Dave Strider, absolutely. Okay, and they, are, they have built a coalition which is now Revive Washington. Right, and I think uh, the plan is to include other people so that they can be come apart. Or any candidate for federal office. Revive Washington is also the state part of it as well. Okay. Because to you right now. But I represent people like me, the silent majority. There is millions of people that feel just like I do. I'm breaking up with the left and Trump. You are, uh, <laughs> it's funny, you are what I thought, the leader that I thought Bernie Sanders was. Let